right, so today I'm going to make a dough according to the AVPN, Associazione Federale Pizza Napolitana. And uh, it's a very interesting way that they have it written down. It's a little different than other uh, baking recipes necessarily because its basis is a liter of water instead of a kilogram of flour, for instance. So I'm using the AVPN allowed uh, flour, which you guys probably all know, Caputo Pizzeria. And um, I'm gonna measure out a liter of water. I already got my yeast, I got 0.4 grams of yeast. For about the 14 to 16 hour fermentation. You always start with the water. Um, I got, I weighed out 1,800 uh, grams of flour. I don't plan to use all of that, but the AVPN states to use between 1,600 and 1,800 grams of flour, which comes out to about 55 to 62 percent hydration. In that or 55.5 to 62.5 in that ballpark. So anyways, it always says you start from the water. There's my liter of water. And then it has a caveat where it says the salt and the yeast should not touch for over five minutes because for a long period of time, salt can uh, kill the yeast. So. The first thing I am going to do is add my salt to my water. I'm not just going to throw my yeast in immediately. I'm going to dissolve my salt in the water by just moving my hands around it. And in about a minute, it should be well dissolved into the water. Also, this is a Madia that I'm making dough in. That's how they do it in Naples. When they do it by hand, if you're not using a mixer. So, you don't want the salt and yeast to be in direct contact for more than five minutes. So, what I'm gonna do is dilute the salt with water and flour. And after I have the salt dissolved in the water, there's no exact amount, but I like to go by something like a tenth of my flour, AKA a scoop. And uh, I'm gonna try to get that into, it won't even be a batter yet, it'll be more of like a cream. When you're making a dough, you watch it go from just the water, to a cream, to a batter, to a thick batter, and then you get into the dough phase, where it can be high hydration if that's how you like it. Um, it can be low hydration by adding more flour. I'm gonna try to get rid of most of the clumps, but at this stage it's fine. I got my active dry yeast, I got 0.4. Like I said, this is for a about a 16 hour in that range fermentation. Temperature in my house is about 23 degrees Celsius or 73.6 degrees Fahrenheit, like it says in AVTN Disciplinare. So now I can draw my yeast. I'm gonna make sure it gets in the water, gets hydrated. I'm gonna go ahead and add another scoop of flour. And it's still not even quite at that batter phase yet. It's almost getting there. It's like coming to be a thick cream. And I'm looking for my clumps. The clumps actually will have dry flour. If you see some of them pop to the surface, sometimes like right there, it's dry flour. So the clumps I try to get to, basically just push them against the ground of this madia and try to smooth it out. And for the rest of this dough making process, that's basically what I'm going to be doing. It'll save me time when it comes to kneading, because I could of course just throw all of this together. I'm going to actually screw over here. My flour on my left side. And now that my salt and my yeast are in there, it's just a matter of adding more and more flour. And I like to go scoop by scoop, not adding all of it once. If I'm using a mixer, it's a little different. So now you can see it's thickening up, definitely getting to that batter phase now.
the more flour you add, the longer it'll take to hydrate the flour. So I'm at that thick batter phase right now. You can see most of this is hydrated. Also got my trusty scraper over here. I like to clean the sides as I go. And since I added 1800 grams of flour total in this bowl, I'm going to go by eye on this one and see how much flour I have left over to determine my total hydration, basically. I have to have at least 200 grams in there. That means I've used 1600, which is that 62.5% range they're looking for. I'm adding more and more flour, like I said, so when I see dry flour, I'm basically trying to move the wet dough to that to basically scoop it up with my hands while I'm kind of massaging the whole thing. What's the difference in taste of low and high hydration? Um, you can get more of an airiness out of high hydration dough because the higher hydration means more water in the dough and you'll get something called oven spring when that water evaporates really fast in a hot oven and that'll become air pockets in your dough. So I see people with 80 hydration and they got really, really airy doughs. But the idea of the AVPN is not to make a dough that the home chef makes with a poolish and a 96 hour cold ferment to really develop flavors and everything like that. The idea is for those who want to own pizzerias and run pizzerias, whether you're in Naples or wherever, but this is a tradition. This is before electricity, this was happening. There's no walk-in coolers. That's why this calls for a room temperature fermentation as well, which fermentation gives you airiness as well. When the gases, the CO2 that the yeast gives off through fermentation, Built air pockets in the dough. Why do they choose wood? Is that just all they had, you think? Or? Wood kind of absorbs moisture and it also actually has properties that when you add certain, when bacteria will grow, good bacteria like lactobacillus, wood does a better job of maintaining the good bacteria that fight off the bad bacteria versus, say, stainless steel. Also, pizza is like a food of the poor in Naples, so they're not gonna have a fabricator make a mixing bowl for them. There wasn't Walmarts to go to. So they could, a lot easier, get a hold of something like this. So now you can see I'm at like the wet dough phase. And it's good to do doughs by hand because you can kind of feel it as you go and see the stages that you pass. For instance, like this feels like what would be like a 80% hydration dough just by feeling it, for instance. And 80 is definitely too hydrated for what we're doing. I like about the 60% range. Now what I'm getting at is probably about 70. How many years you been touching dough? Uh, I've been making pizzas since I was 16. I was a dishwasher at a busy, busy restaurant. The chef was a mean, mean asshole. And I put in my two weeks. Actually, I didn't even put in my two weeks. I went to the pizzeria across the street and said, hey, let me wash dishes here or, do, or move up to prep or something like that. Mm -hmm. And the owner or manager, Eladon, said, 
We don't need dishwashers and prep guys. We need pizza guys. So a little 16 year old me is throwing with some grown men. And that was my first job making pizza at a place called Pal's Pizza. Don't get all freak from them. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say that's the best pizzeria. But that is where I started learning professionally. So I gotta give it something. It's because you have the best. Hey. That's what I tell him. So once you get closer to the dough phase, you definitely want to add less and less flour at a time, basically. Don't worry, that's why, notice I have one hand that's clean and one hand that's extremely messy. Keep that hand messy until the end of the dough. But you're all done. But if you have areas of your dough that you're adding flour to, it's good to kind of squeeze and massage it versus just moving it around because you'll actually speed up the hydration process. Do they make bigger, bigger versions, bigger versions of that box? Oh yeah, I mean, I'm not the best carpenter in the world, but with these dimensions, you can scale it up to whatever you want. Now you want to make sure you can reach an arm in there, basically. And I can do about a five kilogram batch of dough in here, or a three liter batch. Um, so that's about 30 pizzas. One thing that's cool about how the AVPN goes by liters, for instance, for instance, is that one liter of water in your dough recipe will make approximately 10 pizzas. So if you're in the restaurant, and you say, oh, tomorrow I think I'm gonna sell 100 pizzas, but you know you need to make 10 liters of water in your batches of dough. Whether you make 10 one liter batches or five two liter batches, or whatever. See it's starting to come off here. So now we're probably touching 68, 69 degrees. So I can tell I can kind of knead this if I want to. There's a whole slap and fold would be something in the 70s. But I'm getting through most of the kneading as I go when I add flour gradually like this. Take some time for sure. This is how you develop the gluten by stretching it. See how a lot of it's sticking to the madia? When I pull it, I'm stretching it, getting that gluten to start activating. This will save me time at the end. And this is a real mass of dough. I'm kneading it. It's getting tougher and tougher on my hands. Once I get to the point, I think I added most of the flour. I'll probably get a second hand in there to help me out.
also helps if you rub flour on your hands, you can see a lot of that dough that was stuck will come off. It's kind of the opposite of what you think, that you want to use water. The flour will stick to the dough that's on your hands. And it all starts to come together. Remember, you gotta leave at least 200 uh, grams of flour in here. It's gonna be a pretty stiff dough, all in all. I'm not really trying to knead too much, but I am squeezing to really get that flour in there. And this is where it becomes a stiffer dough. Now we're in the 65-ish range. Basically you're adding, absorbing, adding, absorbing. See I got kind of a wet spot here. Add more and absorb. Not much flour in the bowl after this. You know I'm entering the phase of the low 60s. In terms of hydration, it's good to kind of feel it like I said. That way, if you're making a dough, you might even be able to just go by eye and see what feels right. Which takes some skill, especially before fermentation and everything because you got to count for how much more slack it's going to be after it ferments which loosens the dough up as well go into the bowl so I clean off the mahi. This 
where the dough starts feeling stiff. Alright, so now at this point, I'm about to see how much flour I still have in the bowl. And yes, I'm going to account for what's in the Madia. So I know this uh, bowl weighs 355 grams, and so I have 210 grams left in here. So I'm above, just above 62% in here. So now I'm definitely starting the kneading phase. Just turning it 90 and kind of pressing it down. Alright, so I'm going to add a tiny bit more flour. And then I'm going to get into the kneading process. After squeezing this, Lightly flour my surface too. Got a lot of something off my hand. Alright. So basically, when it comes to kneading, I'm going to push and stretch the dough and come back to myself with the palm of my hand and lightly push forward, come back, do it again. I'm going to keep doing that until it comes into like a hot dog like that. And I'm going to take the dough, turn it 90 degrees and repeat. 
And the more I do this, the more I build the gluten on the dough. Your arms look great. So you can see it's smoother and smoother as you go. At this point, I'll leave it just like that. I'm gonna clean this Mahdi up, scrape all the shit out, and then I'm gonna let it rest on top of it for about 30 minutes. And then I'm gonna cut it into balls. And I ball it up as a clinic. <laughs> and that will be the dough for the day. So actually, one thing you can do first before letting it rest is you basically pull the dough back to itself. And you can make it a little more of a ball, your hands tend to go like that. And you can see that's some nice ball dough. And you slap it like you slap your wife 10 years into marriage. I'm gonna let it sit for 30 minutes. Alright, so it's been about 30 minutes. Those are relaxed. Find a spot for this. That works. So it's very nice. I still let me get some of the other extra flour out of here. Alright, so I'm gonna do about 230 gram dough balls. Has to be between uh, 200 and 280. And uh, when I add the dough, like for instance this piece, I don't add it to the smooth side. I try to add it to the side with the air holes. Because this side that's the top of the dough, you want to maintain that throughout the process. You create like a skin on the outside. Keep in mind this dough doesn't call for any sugar or any oil. So you make your dough with your flour, your water, your salt, and your yeast. That's all you really have to work with. So what I got so far, I got I got 10 dough balls and 150 grams left over. So when you roll the dough, see how there's the like air hole side, the bottom side, and then this smooth top side? That's the side you want to keep as the top of the dough. So basically, I'm rolling it in, closing it. Doing the same thing, turning it 90, and I'm just keep closing it. I 
And that's what a good panetti or a dough ball should look like. So on my half tray over here, they're kind of something a little dirty. My last gig, it's okay. I'm gonna do eight from here, and I'm gonna put eight, or probably the other two, on another tray. So once again, keeping that on the top, and I'm folding it under, so I get something like that, and I'm closing it. Turning it 90 degrees, doing it again, and I'm closing it. And I keep doing that. And once it gets real small like that, I'm basically just rolling my thumb up into my webbing there to make a nipple on the dough like that. I'm gonna close it. Penis. Penis. <laughs> So yeah, once again, the smooth side up. I'll do it in fast motion like I normally would. Don't try to do it fast, do it nice so you get good at it. Also made a mistake, this is actually a 12 hour recipe with 0.41 grams of yeast. Which in the comments will have amounts of yeast for every for two hour increments. If you want to find what's between 20 and 22 for instance, just average the two. So I found all these values. This is a half size dough box. So I'd probably put 15 if it was a full size. And five rows of three. Dirty dough boxes. I'll actually wipe this one off. So for these last few dough balls, my 10 and a half basically. I'm going to space them out because I want to see how their doming is and everything. For instance, I don't want them to be flat when it comes time to use them. I want them to have a nice dome over them. And so I'm going to space this out basically as much as possible. Keep this little super small dough ball. five inch pizza right here. Put it right there. And then I'm gonna put a lid on it. Wipe this lid off my last gig. And I'll show it to you 12 hours later. And unfortunately I don't have an AVPN oven to cook this off in. But I do I have a Baker's Pride at the restaurant I work at. And I'm going to test it out in there and send you some pictures in the morning. So that's it. That's how you make AVPN dough. Thank you very much. All right. Here is some New York pizza dough from the restaurant. 48 hour cold ferment, looks good. And here is the AVPN dough I made last night about 12 hours ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make one of each and compare. Here I'm making it in a New York pizza oven, a Baker's Pride, and uh, it, you'll see it probably won't get the same browning you would want. See it's got some minor fermentation if you will.
Yes, you see that? Yep, cool. That's good. So I'm using shredded mozzarella because the oven's only 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is the AVP endo. And this is the New York dough. Baker's Pride, got them both right there. But yeah, just so you guys know, the one on the left is the AVP Endo, the one in front is the uh, New York Dough. All right, so I'm going to take another look, and I can see that this has more browning, if you can tell, the New York Dough. And that's because of the, uh, the sugar and the oil, which will give uh, caramelization. The flour is also malted. And if you ask why I'm doing what I'm doing here, I like to get bottom heat from the stone and then finish off the top with the kind of broiler type element, which is on the bottom. So this one can probably even sit on the stone longer because if you look at the bottom, it's just lightly brown. You also see how white that is compared to the other one. So the cheese will finish cooking and everything before that's done. That's kind of why you want browning is so everything cooks evenly and that's how it does in the Baker's Pride oven. So you can now see the pizza with New York dough is done right when the sauce and cheese is done. You can see under is nice crispy brown bottom. Where this is on the stone the whole time, it got a little dark. It's nice. But you can see the cheese is almost starting to burn already. And the dough is still white. Trying to spin this and hold the camera. It's not as easy as I thought. Got a little bit of color. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be a while before that's done. So the AVPN calls for no sugar, no oil in the dough, where New York pizza does. See, it's got a nice brown bottom. Also, when a pizza comes out of the oven, it's ideal to get it on cardboard or wood, because it'll absorb the moisture and keep it crispy. When cutting, you want to have something to hold it down a little bit, but always get on top of the cutter like that, too. So you can see, there's no flop. Definitely not the best crumb shot ever. But it's nice. You can see that crispy bottom. You can do this in your home oven with the New York pizza dough, which will be my next video. Um, but yeah, that's a simple New York pizza. This AVPN, traditional pizza. It's probably done now. I don't want the cheese to completely burn. It looks white, but that's just because there's no browning to it. The dough is cooked. So. Looks a little different on camera than it does um, 
when I actually look at it in person, but that's very light, not quite as light as it looks like on there. So once again, you wanna get over the cutter and let your weight go down. So that was definitely still crispy. So you can see right there, got a nice little crumb. There's the bottom. So, but there's not really much browning. You can feel it's crispy and done, but it's uh, not very much browning going on. Where in a thousand degree oven, wood fired oven, uni, whatever, um, there, you don't want your pizza to brown like this. Like this New York pizza dough would stand no chance in that oven. It would turn black from browning at that heat. So this gives you a chance at a higher heat. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this is now going to go into the uni. Is that about 900, 950 degrees? I'm pushing all the air to the outside. Sauce. Oh, that's not where that goes. Basil. Some fresh mozzarella. Should see it start to poof up with that high heat in there. You're missing it. Not feel for that. That polina real quick. I got. It. See, it's I burnt it a little bit right there, but it's nice and crunchy all the way around. It's a nice pizza, and now it has some browning to it. Nice undercarriage for a Nepolitana pizza, but it has some browning now because of the high heat. If I cook it at 500 degrees Fahrenheit, it won't brown at all. Probably kind of hard to see. I can rip open the dough. Kind of see it. It's kind of on the dense side, but it's a nice pizza. That's a nice pizza in the Bordano. I'm supposed to be the master pizza guy here. But my partner is making wonderful pizzas over here. Where are the scissors? Cut that open. Let's 
soon. Oh. Hey, wait, come back like that. Let me get the camera to focus on it for a sec. Can you see that? I don't know. Well, that's a really nice crumb. Unfortunately, I got a Polish camera. But it's very nice. That's a nice pizza. Thick music over it. That gives you great gas. Got my partner making a, a pizza right now. He's new to making pizza, but I taught him a few things. And he makes a great freaking pizza. Killy killy power. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm recording. He's taking his time and making a nice pizza. He's not rushing it. Oh, out of mods? Alright. We'll go with the marinara today. Yeah, I guess marinara needs a little more. Fresh garlic. Can you put the music over it? Yeah, the parts that you can clearly hear me talking, I'll have me talking. But like this, where I'm speaking to you guys, saying have a good day, that'll have some music over it. Oh, thank you for eating it, honestly. Hey, have a good one, guys. Alright, let's watch this cook. Take it easy, guys. I could have spin right now. Do you need me to move to the other side or anything? No. Look at that, it's a beautiful marinara pizza. Add basil, crunchy, soft, and crunchy. AVPN dough, direct dough, easy. Nice bottom, beautiful, beautiful pizza.